Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 41 of Celestial Journey. Pick up where we last where we left off last episode. Let's see if we can make our 600 firebox casings now. I thought this is, oh no, that's good. Lots of bites, lots of stuff. I wonder what are the highlights here. 19k modularium, 42k electrical steel, a lot of stuff, folks. 28,000 gold and iron. Alright, fire. So I expect that'll be a couple minutes of crafting at the least. Um, while that goes, let's check on the status of our neutronium collector compressor. Uh, I made some changes because I realized uh, it actually eats redstone faster than I produce it. So I set something up here that says, uh, let's see, the level emitter is on when we have more than 20,000 blocks, which turns the export bus on. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to give it all of my um, redstone. Where I give it anything in excess of 20,000. And in fact, I don't have 20,000 right now, so it's off. But we have 11 redstone singularities, which will make us a handful of these extreme crafting tables. We'll, uh, let's tackle that after we make our Supremium ovens. Alright, so, uh, at least six-ish minutes. Uh, I'll probably just wait for it at this point. Another thing I did, uh, between episodes was I started scaling up some of our alchemy setups here. So, uh... Most notably, the making of, uh, what's this one called? Glacialis or something? You can see, we are lagging a little bit now, which totally sucks. It basically means instead of taking, you know, five seconds or however long this normally takes, it now takes like six or seven or... Um, but alas. Anyways, yeah, Glacialis. It's because that is a key component in, not that one, but uh, this one. Frozen block. And frozen blocks are probably going to be one of our bottlenecks in Neutronium. So let's see, neutronium, six of these. Oh, our shiver relief machine may have gotten stuck. Uh, you know, this machine gets stuck way too often. Uh, yeah, we need another 5,000, and each piece of this frozen block? Let's... I'm pretty sure the bottleneck in our... Yeah, I mean, the only reasonable thing to be the bottleneck is the icy base, which is four pieces of glacialis. It's unfortunate that it's such an annoying dust because, uh, let's see, so Glacialis uses, oh, it's stuck again, son of a god. Anyways, it uses Aquas, and Aquas uh, uses, like, these unstacking potion flasks, and those have to be crafted using these unstacking water bottles. So it's like, it's a bunch of steps, it's really slow, it's really annoying, and uh, this process gets jammed a lot. It gets jammed when I run out of aquas though, so it's not really like slowing down my net production. Um, it probably just means that I need to improve my aquas production to keep the keep this alchemy table from getting jammed. There should only be two stacks of ice in here for it to, you know, run. But whatever. For it to run smoothly, I think I need somewhere around four alchemy tables making potion flasks for every one alchemy table that's making uh, aquas. And one alchemy table making aquas and support just under one alchemy table making glacialis. Um, so I think right now I have like 16, if you look all the way up to there, of those. So I'll probably have to like at least double the number of uh, alchemy tables I have making this and increase a bit of this. But uh, it's, you know, each one involves an item filter, like a couple item filters and a bunch of conduit configuring. And it's boring, so I'll do that off camera. But notice how this thing is no longer complaining about a lack of obsidian. Our obsidian farm has done its job. And now I'm going to go shut it off so it doesn't cause any more lag. So next up, while our crafting finishes, still a couple minutes left, let's make some uh, changes to our world nibbler. First of all, turn it off so that I can go there without crashing. I suspect it's stuck on a chunk boundary. Alright, here we are, and is this on a chunk boundary? It isn't, so why is it stuck? Ah, huh. no reason for it to be stuck. So before, I noticed it got stuck on chunk boundaries a lot, so I added these, uh, like, fingers. Basically what happens is each time before the machine tries to move forward, it extends the piston one block forward, which in theory puts it into the new chunk that hasn't been generated yet, forcing it to be generated before the machine tries to move. However, we are stuck here. Uh, oh, 
we stuck because we ran out of power. All right, well, that's an easy one to fix. All right, I just gave it a whole bunch of electrotine in the form of a, a compacting drawer here. This is what, like, over a thousand stacks of electrotine dust. That should fix this. All right, cool. Um, and our f things here are powered again. So uh, that should be enough for me to head back to the overworld and turn this back on. All right, so let's turn that back on. Usually when I turn it on, I just want to watch this ender chest. I, I turn off the uh, extract from it for a few seconds, watch this ender chest, and make sure that items are actually coming into it. Uh, I think it's on like eight second cycle, so we should be seeing our first wave of items now. Now. There's a little bit of lag, so it's a little more than eight seconds now. Come on, please. Hey, here they are. All right, cool. And we even got two shimmer leaves in the first batch. Um, I've been keeping all the items just because, I don't know, I'm too lazy to filter it all. I just store it all into digital storage now. Now that digital storage is cheap, it's like, all right, I'll just order 30, 56k cells and store stuff in it. Um, cool. So our uh, World Nibbler is back online. I actually have a significant upgrade I want to make to it uh, soon. Let me show you here. Uh, I haven't done it here yet, but right now, you know how I'm using like uh, mechanical miners and ender porcupines to mine one block down. I'm pretty sure if I actually just use a builder, I can configure a builder to mine like one long row and have it just, you know, when the builder moves, right? Because it, the area that's mined is defined as an offset from the machine itself. The area that's mined should move with it. That way, uh, for one, I don't need all these ender porcupines and mechanical miners. And for two, I can have one machine mine 512 blocks wide. And thirdly, the uh, the builder solves the like new chunk problem because it generates the chunk it mines in. So as long as you have your builder mining, you know, at least one or two blocks ahead of your machine, it'll generate the chunks you're about to run into. Oh, and lastly, you can have a much smaller flying machine. So you know how. Right now, that thing is like nine chunks wide. Well, with a builder, I can mine 500 blo 512 blocks wide using uh, only like a maybe a 10 block wide machine. Well, so looks like our crafting set. All right, let's start building those uh, Supremium ovens. So I gathered all the supplies for it in this satchel here. It's a lot of blocks, but uh, that's what it takes to make 50 ovens. I figure I'll put it here in our uh, farming dimension or our wither dimension, whatever it is. Again, it's peaceful. No mobs will spawn here unless I put down Cursed Earth. However, I put down Cursed Earth, withers, bleh, withers will spawn. So, uh, you know, just don't do that. Here's one Supremium Oven. Uh, looks like they don't even take power. I thought they did, but it uh, looks, looks like all I have to do is give them blocks of Infernium. And they will very slowly... Turn that into blocks of Supremium, which come out the other end. Cool. Anyways, there's no copy-paste gadget or anything similar in this pack. Well, no, nothing that explicitly is for copy-pasting. So I'm hoping that I can uh, con the builder into doing that. Well, I know I can con the builder into doing that. I just hope it's easy to do so. I think if I place the builder here, uh, I have this shape chamber built around the entire thing. Um, I'm hoping it's willing to paste, let's see, I want copy mode and preview. Uh, cool. So I want to move it one block over, but I guess this is, generally speaking, how I will do this. Um, let me gather a few components and I'll try it out. All right, so input materials go on top. Uh, give it power. Turn it on. Turn it on. Hey, would you look at that? And then I just have to move everything over a few blocks and do it again. Uh, it won't auto-form the structure because it doesn't have like the, the blueprint in it. But I think once I drop that in, yeah, it forms. Awesome. So it's like, it's, it's copy-pasting kind of. I have to like manually move a few blocks to do it. But uh, yeah. And unfortunately, there's no way I can pick up the chest with its inventory. I guess if I were smart, I would use a chest that retains its inventory, huh? So one, two, three, four, five. I think that's where this goes. Technically, don't even have to repower it. Yeah, that's good because uh, because like it has the internal buffer. So I think I just ha all I have to do is drop. Oh, that's I do have to give it items. So give it items. Give it a red cell. I guess I could even turn it to 
fucking board. Oh, look at me being efficient. And just move it over five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. Go. It won't go even unignored, I guess. Anyways, uh, it's like a poor man's copy paste tool. Now watch me get really cute. I um changed our like our copy basically to copy the entire row. So if all works out, I can paste the entire row at once. Check the preview, make sure. That looks about right to me. Uh, do I want another space in between? Sure, for symmetry may as well. But now I get to build six at once. Look at me go. Yeah, that looks good. Voila. Easy as pie. Oh no, it's duplicating. Oh, the power of exponential growth. Whoopsies, ran out of materials right at the end here. Uh, I think I only got materials, or only brought materials for 50, and this is 54. So, here's the rest of it. Uh, I might have to restart it. And I think eventually it'll find the points where it left off and start filling them back in. Yeah, there we go. Now it's filling in the spots I missed earlier. And we're exactly out of materials. Good. It's like, you know, when you're when you're done assembling your uh, your cabinet and you don't have leftover screws or your bed. Anyways, um, now for the tedious part. I have to manually go insert the blueprint into each one of these. And then I have to go configure all the item conduits. All right, I've hooked up all the item conduits. So inputs are provided via a ender chest here. The ender chest is filled right over here uh, somewhere with a bunch of infernium. I could have run a cable all the way over to there, but then I'd have to chunk load like the entire length of the cable. Um, so I decided whatever, I'll just use an ender chest. And likewise, outputs go into triple white ender chest, which I always use as just by, you know, eat all these items into the AE system. So... Uh, this will gradually produce Supremium, and there we just saw it went up by one. All right, um, so yeah, it's uh, 200 seconds per. There's 54 of them, so on average, it'll produce one per four-ish seconds once you account for lag, once per five to six seconds. Cool. Um, it's automated. And by my count, to make the 15,000 that we're missing... Uh, at, if we assume it produces one per five, this entire set, setup produces one per five seconds, we'll take 20 hours, which means uh, with any luck, it'll be ready for tomorrow's episode. So in that case, um, let's move on to the next bottleneck, Shimmer Leaf. If you remember, we have the World Nibbler to deal with that, but let's go and make those World Nibbler upgrades now. So when we first built the World Nibbler, we built it here-ish, right, and sent it uh, north. And it's gone, I don't know exactly how far, but it's gone many thousands of blocks by now. So um, instead of, you know, tearing it down, I think I'm just going to continue, or the, like I'm just going to build another one, this time running southwards. And uh, I'll use the builder idea. Um, I'm not 100% sure it'll work, so I don't want to like tear down the old one before we get it, before we get this up and running. But I'm like 85% sure. So here it is, uh, I don't know what to call it, Son of World Nibbler? Anyways, um, it's again the same fundamental design. Frame linear actuator pushes everything else, frame boulder causes the linear actuator to catch back up. The only difference is the mining is done by a builder. The shape card here, if I show preview mode, is, uh, well, that's not quite centered, is it? Let me uh, change that shape card setting just a little bit to center it horizontally, or hor center it along the x-axis. There we go. So uh, the settings on the shape card are 512 by 1 by 1. So it's exactly one line at exactly you know the level that the flowers would spawn at. Um, and then the offset is minus 48. That's to get the Y level right. And I want it to be slightly ahead of the machine again because the, uh, the quarry then will act as our chunk generator as we fly forward. So I don't need to do that piston finger thing. Um, cool. 
for now, I'm not putting a filter in it just so I can make sure that it works, you know, because sometimes you can go multiple Y levels in a row without getting anything right. So uh, turn it on. I might in the long run need more than one electric chain generator to keep up with, you know, this system. But uh, I think it's, what do I have the timer set to? Five. So every five seconds, it pushes the whole thing forward. The actuator catches up. Uh, I have to turn the quarry on. Skip a step. All right, so let's turn preview mode. Oh, it's also important to keep, uh, normally you have your quarries on single stop and run, right? Because, or single run and stop. Because once you do a, you know, a run, there's no point having it keep going. However, in this case, because we're moving it, you definitely want to keep running with redstone signal. Turn it on. All right, so it's ready now. We see we have some stuff in here. Uh, we can then turn this off. That will, whoopsies, hold on. How did you not get pushed? Um, I, no, hold on. Let, let, let's, let me just fix that by hand. And I'll keep an eye on, on it if it happens again. All right, so turn you on. Oh, I, I know what happened. I need you on once too. There we go. All right. So that pushes the entire frame. That pushes the frame linear actuator up. It mines the next rail. Got some shimmer leaf. Repeat. Uh, I might not be waiting long enough, actually. I need to wait long enough for this to make one pass. How long is that? It's not very long, is it? Uh, let's put it on single run and time it. Go. Okay, it's like one second. Never mind. I think I'm giving it plenty of care. I'll err on the side of safety and give it an extra second. All right, so every six seconds, it'll advance one Y level. And here we have it, the, the son of the world nibbler. It'll produce, well, I'll have to replace this with uh, our ender chest, and I'll probably filter it for only shimmer leaf because I don't really care for all these other things. Um, Maybe I'll include like great silver wood logs and great wood logs so I don't have a farm for them yet. But this should be a much lower lag, um, much faster, and much less game crashing version of the World Nibbler, which is very good because, you know, if I was running the World Nibbler while looking at it, it would like crash my game 100% of the time. So uh, that's obviously a significant drawback. Uh, at a glance, actually, it looks like one electrotine generator produces enough electrotine power to power this entire thing as well. I think the amount of power the frame actuator takes is, you know, proportional to how many blocks it moves. And since I'm moving a lot less blocks now, this isn't a problem. Cool. So with the Son of World Nibbler up and running, I think I could turn World Nibbler off. Uh, turn it off. We'll teleport to it just to uh, pull the pull all the trunk loaders off of it. So that, you know, it's no longer taking up tick time. I'm sure just being loaded doesn't have that much tick time, but, you know, no sense leaving it chunk loaded if we're not using it, right? And uh, this will stay here as a museum of sorts. How far did it go? It went 5,000 blocks. I mean, that's not bad for this absolute huge flying monstrosity. Uh, I thought I had one more chunk loader on it. I thought I had six total. All right, whatever. Uh, looks like I got them all. By my count, this machine covers two trunks worth of terrain per cycle. Basically, 512 blocks, right, is the same as two 16 by 16 chunks. Um, so, wait, is that right? Yeah, 16 by 16 is 256 times two is 512. All right, cool. So, um, I think our previous conclusion was that there was about one shimmer leaf per like five to six chunks covered. So this hits one shimmer leaf every, let's call it every three cycles of five seconds. So every 15 seconds, it produces one shimmer leaf. Um, I'll test over the course of like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes to see if we're uh, consistent with that. But assuming we are, uh, let's take a look at Neutronium again then. The, we need how many more? A thousand more? So uh, let's see, 1300 by 15 seconds comes out to about six hours which is fine if this can produce all the shimmer leaf we need or the remaining shimmer leaf in six hours that's much faster than the world nibbler was doing it and is a acceptable amount of time to wait in my opinion uh one small change i added a drawer here to provide electrotine to our electrotine generator you know having worked in that void dimension and that other dimension for a while our base feels so laggy like i know this thing says well you can't quite see it uh 
there you go. I moved the little button. Uh, it says like 30-ish FPS. This doesn't feel like 30 FPS, right? At least maybe not. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, anyways, I miss having the like 100 plus FPS in the, that we were enjoying over in uh, over here. I don't know why I teleported here. But yeah, look at that. 100-ish FPS. I mean, you guys are getting it in 60. I'm getting it in 100. Uh, and by doing this, I've now made the video file size like 3 gigabytes larger than it has to be. All right, enough complaining about lag. Let's move on to the next task, which is auto extreme crafting. So this thing also takes, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think the halos don't stack and it takes more than 10 different item types. So we have to, you know, have, we'll, we'll let package auto encode the recipe for us. Uh, I think I have to, you know, manually encode a few more recipes like this halo and uh, this brazier has to be crafted in the infusion. But aside from that, I think we have everything we need to make it now. There's some MBT data weirdness again going on with these manufacturing halos. When I request them, to, well, first of all, the one that gets imported into the recipe automatically is different uh, because the one that gets imported automatically, let's see, has no MBT data on it. But the ones that I craft when I auto craft them have some MBT data on them, but as soon as I withdraw them and uh, like I have no mana in my inventory, right? So I don't, I don't know if it's a mana value and put them back. They have a different set of MBT data. So uh, because of that, I think I'm just going to exclude these from the craft um, and manually add them back in at the end when I, you know, go to put everything together. Uh, MBT data on these processing recipes gets really weird. And I have no clue what the actual MBT tags are, but I'm just going to do it the simplest way for myself. All right, so now, uh, oh, now does it all fit in one package? It does, cool. All right. That's okay, I'll keep using package auto for it because it's already, it, uh, you know, puts, like it makes the recipes nice and easy. So when I request these, what do I get stuck on? Tin ingots, really? And Endarium base. And potash okay um tin ingots what am i out of tin ingots all right well endarium base is easy i think like almost nothing uses endarium base so i've never bothered to keep any around uh one of these should have it but since i don't need endarium and ingot form anymore right i can just borrow all this endarium base there we go all right problem solved i think all my tin probably got used making uh these here right the dynamos for the jetpacks i recall use a lot of tin oh they're full i don't know um i'm just gonna plant another tin seed i guess all right more tin seeds equals more tin ingots so we should be able to make a auto extreme crafting table looks good fire and by the magic of auto crafting all these all this, you know, micro crafting, sub crafting, applying upgrades to boxes, yada, yada, yada. I don't have to do by hand. I just have to sit by while, you know, our runic altar and our, our Batania altar and our runic altar do their thing. They're both called runic altars, aren't they? This is, well, the normal versions of runic altar. Wait, is this? Oh, well, this is a runic matrix. Ah, that changes everything. Why aren't you running? Ah, I made a mistake with the recipe. I previously had it like this, right? But the fluorite stone can't go in the center because if it does, it's already, you know, it's a it's crafted in the infusion altar, so it'll automatically get extracted if I do that. So I have to replace it with center. And that should take care of that problem. And indeed, that did take care of that problem. This infusion takes a lot of aspects. It's going to take like two minutes. Oh well. And here is the first of hopefully many auto extreme crafting tables. Oh, it leaves crafting units behind? That might be annoying. Oh well, this isn't something that we need so many of that we have to fully automate. So um, as I was saying before though, the first thing I want to automate is the fire gem and probably all the gems, but starting with the fire gem. So let's, uh, where do I even put this? Here, let's just put this here so I can learn how it works. Okay, so it looks like it takes power, 
Um, and is this a ghost recipe or is it a real recipe? Is the fact that it highlights? I assume it's ghost. Okay, so it's a ghost recipe, and I assume real items then just get put in the input side. I know I used one of these a long time ago, but it's been a real long time. Uh, maybe if I power it, it'll do something different. We're in the uh, experimenting phase here. Does it put them in the right slot? Does it not care if they're in the right slot or not? Okay, cool. So it doesn't care if they're in the right slot or not. So then all I have to do is put this where that chest is, and I think we're good to go. All right, let's give it a shot. Um, so it looks like I can just leave the lava crystals in there. I don't have to do anything fancy with those. If I request 10 fire gems, it should dump materials into here. Yeah, and it just crafts them into fire gems. Wow, this is so much better than uh, what's that soup and other mod? Uh, Extreme Crafting, their auto crafting table. All right, so now how do I extract items from there? Can I extract on the top, or does it have to be the bottom? Top doesn't work. Okay, I guess it has to be the bottom. Extract it out the bottom, put them in there, and that should complete the craft. Awesome. Cool. So um, let's see if I can make a couple more. We are There's definitely some bottlenecks in this process, like uh, those singularities. Tin ingots, apparently. Uh, pot oh, I forgot to put the drawer upgrade on potash. Let's go do that right now before I forget again. Well, instead of putting an upgrade on it, we'll just pull the current upgrade out of it. Or the current downgrade out of it. And that should... I think there's a stack queued in here. Ooh, this uses Aquas too. That sucks. Aquas is my, you know, my bottleneck for making... Uh, making glacious oh well so if i make three more of these i can do the gems auto craft the gems and once i have the gems auto crafting uh, i think we can auto craft neutronium ingots without intervention so this will probably take it like 15 minutes to craft so i'll just start it up now out of curiosity let's check up on our shimmer leaves Ooh, we're up a couple hundred more from i mean what was like an hour ago so uh yeah about about 15 seconds each seems right. While we wait for that crafting task to finish, let's make one small change here. Right now I'm using a single quarry to mine, uh, you know, 512 blocks like wide centered on this. If I use two quarries, I can go 512 blocks that way and 512 blocks that way, effectively doubling the speed here. So uh, let me rearrange things a little bit. I can put my teleporter here, which I think remains bound. Yep. And then I can put another builder here. And I just need, you know, a few more frames for like levers and stuff. So that simple change should effectively double the speed of the, uh, I forgot what I called this thing already. Son of World Nibbler. Um, it's where that my hand goes transparent whenever the machine starts moving. I don't know, whatever. Frame, frame machines are weird, hacky monstrosities, and I'm... Happy that it doesn't crash my game. So I upgraded five of our crafting tables total to the auto version. There's a uh, everlasting stone and the four you know gem types. And with that, let's see if we can auto craft a neutronium ingot. Now looking at this, let's uh, again. I, I like to scan these for the highlights. You know what interests me. Lots of quartz, whatever. Mm. That's a lot of terra steel. A lot of netherite. Eleven hundred quad compressed obsidian. Not that bad. All right, start. Um, I'm actually not quite sure what the bottleneck will be. Maybe if I, I can add a rhodium dust to our crafting wall, doubt that'll be the bottleneck. Although there's like no processing recipes in here. Almost everything's a crafting recipe. And we can see that uh, these are being hit. 
and they're auto crafted now so i don't have to you know we've now successfully eliminated the manual step of taking items out of the chest and putting them in the crafting table which is always good the less manual steps the better but yeah it looks like the crafting of a rothium dust might end up being the bottleneck or this quartz i don't know in any event in about a minute we should get our neutronium ingot and there we have it one ingot of neutronium i wonder if there's a quest for that probably was i haven't really been following the quest line oh i'm like way behind on quests all right let's uh collect my dragon heart woohoo draconic cores woohoo uh nope i guess that's as far as i get on quests for now Vibrant cores woohoo in any event, um, let's wrap up this episode here. We'll come back next time and put, uh, see if we can continue our neutronium. In fact, just out of curiosity, what more do we need to make five more neutronium? Bit of shimmer leaf, frozen blocks, premium. All right, cool. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.